Good morning, brother. It's been a while since I... came to Kajang Baptist Fellowship. Uh, the last time is before the pandemic. Yeah, so this is my first time after the pandemic. So it's good to be here once again. Uh, I believe there are also many faces that probably have not seen me. Uh, you probably have seen me in re on recording la, during the, the MCO. La. So let's just, let me just give a brief introduction once again. La. So my name is Brandon Wong. I am originally from KK Sabala, but now I'm residing in Cheras, serving in Taman Mida Lutheran Church as a full-time pastor. I'm also working with Malaysia Baptist Theological Seminary for their certificate program in youth ministry. Yeah, so it's good to see all of you once again. All right, so today is the last day of the Chinese New Year celebration. So let me still use this opportunity for, on this last day to greet you a blessed Chinese New Year, or Yuan Xiao Jie Kuai Le. Hope all of you had a good celebration for the past two weeks. So during Chinese New Year, uh, one of the things that is often emphasized is blessing. Yeah, it, it's blessing. So you would see the word in Chinese, or it, it means blessing in English, in decorations, ang pao, or shirts. And I believe it is not just Chinese, that everyone, regardless of race or background, would hope that as they begin the new year, that that year would be filled with blessings. Yeah, I believe everyone wants their life to have abundance of blessing, and all of us, likes to receive blessings. But although we like to receive blessings, we are not so good at giving blessings. Yeah, we like to receive, but in terms of giving blessings, we are not really good. And it's even harder to bless those that we do not like, in a sense, enemies. So today, my sermon is on the difficult blessing to give, yeah, a difficult blessing to give. And the passage that we will be looking, the passage that we will be looking at is Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 35, which we have read just now. So this part, this passage is part of Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah, so Luke also has a version on the Sermon on the Mount. And in Luke chapter 6, verses 17, it says that Jesus came down with his disciples and stood at a level place and started teaching the crowds. And part of the teachings includes how we should bless those who are unfavorable to us. And, and this is what we will be learning for today. And there are two points that I would like to bring to you. Now, so the first one uh, is we all have unfavorable people in our life. It may be someone who has offended us or treated us badly before. It may be someone who we may have conflict with before as well. Or it may just be someone whose personality and attitude annoy us. You know, sometimes that person haven't, haven't even do anything towards us, but once we see that person, uh, I, I, I won't get along with that person. just doesn't click with me. Lah. And it can also be someone who is just against us. You know, we, have not, we don't know what we have done to them, what we have said to them, but somehow that person is always against us, always uh, go against our words, treat us harshly. So we have unfavorable people in our life. And Jesus is aware that his disciples and the believers at that time also 
have enemies. So therefore, in the Sermon on the Mount, he commands his disciples to love their enemies. So who is my enemy? What kind of enemy is Jesus referring here? Well, although Jesus did not clarify on who exactly that enemy is, he did give a description on how that enemy may look like and what that enemy does to you. Yeah, so he says that this enemy is someone who hates us, curses us, abuses us, strikes us on the cheek, and takes away our belonging. Basically, these are people who persecute us. And in Greek, the term in the passage, the term when Jesus is using to describe the enemy, Jesus is actually using a present continuous tense. So it means that the persecution it is, is not something that has happened in the past, but is presently ongoing. And so if we translate it literally, uh, Jesus is actually saying those people are hating us, cursing us, abusing. Yeah, I've got the I-N-G behind. Uh. Yeah, so it's present continuous. So they are currently, actively, and continuously persecuting us. And Jesus is commanding us to love them. To love them. But how should we love them? Jesus says to do good to them, bless them, pray for them, do not retaliate or respond with evil towards them, give them what they need, and do unto them just as how we would like to be treated. Now, I would like you to think about the most hateful person in your life. I try to imagine that person, you know, the most hateful person you have in your life. It may be someone that you would like to avoid at all costs, or it may be someone who has hurt you so much, or it is someone who always bothers you and brings problems into your life. Think about that person. Now try to imagine treating them in a manner that is according to what Jesus commands us. Imagine doing all this for them. In a sense, it's almost impossible, right? I mean, maybe you can do one or two. Lah. Pray for them, can. Lah. But give them what they need. Lah. Or, do un uh, or, or to do not retaliate. Lah. I mean, some of these are actually very hard. And sometimes it, even, it will even feel very fake if we do it, right? Because we don't like, ma. So even though we treat them nice, la, we just, it's just on the surface, la. give face on it. La. It's, it's very fake. So it shows that we are often unable to genuinely bless the unfavorable people in our lives. It may even feel unnatural to do so because it's not our natural response. It's not our natural instinct. And we are not the only one who struggle with it. Because during the time of Jesus, the traditional teaching was opposite with what Jesus is saying here as well. You see, in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 38, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And this is also known as the law of retaliation found in Exodus 21. But you see, when, when, when Jesus is, te is teaching something different, it does not mean that he's opposing the law of Moses. But rather, what Jesus is opposing is the interpretation of the Jewish religious teachers. You see, the law of retaliation found in Exodus 21 is actually to provide a legalistic guideline to execute a proper punishment for those who have sinned and those who have committed a crime. So the greater the crime, the more severe the punishment will be. And this is to promote justice so that they can give the right punishment to the right wrong. 
So only those who are in authority will actually execute this punishment. So the law of retaliation is actually not to be applied individually or personally. It is for the whole community, yeah, for them to execute punishment. That's their law. So it does not promote personal revenge done by individual. So the problem is when the Jewish religious leader take this law out of context and they, and they now promote the idea where we can rightfully retaliate towards others in the same manner that they treat us. So they say, if your enemy do evil towards you, you can respond with evil because the law of retaliation allows it. So they teach that you should hate your enemy, keep enmity in your hearts to them, and exact revenge if you have the opportunity. I think this would be easy for us to do, right? Yeah, if we interpret it in this way. And in fact, this would be more natural for us to do. We see this even among little children, right? Yeah, when, when a child pulls the hair of another child, how, how would the other child respond? Pull back, lah. Yeah, then they will fight each other. And sometimes we do that to one another as well, although we don't physically pull each other's hair. Lah. But when someone says something very insulting to you, you would often want to respond in the same way. This is, in a sense, natural. But this natural is caused by our sinful nature. It is natural in a corrupted and sinful world. So now Jesus points out that this is wrong. And not only that it is wrong, what we should do is actually totally opposite of it. So in a sense, Jesus is telling us to go against nature, go, go against the sinful nature. And he does not only commands us, he himself sets the example. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it puts it very clear by saying, God shows us His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, in, in our sins, we were enemies of God. And while we were still going against God, actively sinning against Him, walking away from Him, he sends His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And He forgives us, blesses us, and loves us. Sometimes our difficulty in loving and blessing the unfavorable people in our lives is because we feel that they don't deserve it. Yeah, because of their action, because of how they, they behave, some of the words they say. We think that they don't deserve good things. And perhaps we are right. They don't deserve it. Yeah? They are bad people to us. But as a matter of the fact, none of us also deserve God's love and blessing. In the eyes of God, all of us are sinners. Yet, God still gave it to us. He still blesses us, He still loves us, and He forgives us. And this is why Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, says, Do not repay evil for evil, or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. So for, for we who have already experienced the love of God, and experience this blessing, receiving this blessing from Him, we are now called to do the same for others. And this is why Jesus intentionally uses the terms in a present continuous way to describe the action and the attitude of the enemies. It means that while they are persecuting us, while they are treating us bad, we already have to bless them. We do not wait for them to change or repent. Because at the end of the day, it's actually not about them. 
It's not about how they behave or what they do. It's about us. It's about how we respond to the situation. It's about whether we are able to be, to show Christ's likeness in times like that. To respond towards others just like how Jesus has treated us. It's about our response. And this is indeed a difficult blessing to give. But it is a blessing that we have received and should give to others, including our enemies. In the next point, Jesus not only calls us to bless those who are unfavorable in our lives, he also calls us to an even higher level of blessing others. And that is to bless them without expecting anything in return. Wow, so we're wondering, bless already so hard. Huh? Not to bless without expecting anything in return. Wow, to give unconditional blessings for enemies. And we may wonder, why? Why should we do this? Why should we bless them in such a way? Well, we do know that we do this because Jesus himself has set an example, but Jesus do gives us more reason. Yeah, in verse 32, he says, If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. Verse 33, If you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. Verse 34, If you lend to those whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. And I think there are two things that we can take note here. Firstly, it means that we do things, if we do things only to expect something in return, Jesus says that there will be no further benefit or credit for us. And the benefit or credit that Jesus is talking about in these verses is most likely a spiritual reward. So if we do things to others only to expect something in return, then the, the thing that we expect in return would be the only reward we have. And God will not reward us any further. Yeah, because we have the wrong attitude, we do it with the wrong mindset. So there is no further blessing from God. Secondly, Jesus also points out that if we bless others in order to receive something in return, then even sinners, or in a sense even non-believers, can do the same. This means that if our blessings towards others are conditional, then there is nothing special about it. Everyone can do it. So instead, Jesus actually calls us to be different, not to be like everyone, to be set apart from the world. And this includes the way we bless others as well. So not only that we bless our enemies, we also bless them unconditionally without expecting anything in return. And this means that we may even need to make sacrifices on our side. And this is indeed not easy. See, no one in their right mind would want to make sacrifices for their enemies. Yeah, sometimes making sacrifices for family is also very hard already. You're like, huh? I have to sacrifice something for my brother or sister. Let me think first. Lah. Well, now enemies uh, is even harder. And th but this is what we are called for. We are called to a higher standard of blessing others. And this is why G in verses 29 to 30, Jesus then says, To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from the one who takes away your goods, do not give them back. 
But this verse often makes us uncomfortable. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Huh? It, it, it sounded like we should let ourselves to be bullied by others. That it is all right if other people take advantage of us and we should not retaliate. So, well, is Jesus asking us to really be like this? Are Christians supposed to be like this, to go out and get beaten up and say, whoa, okay, I fulfilled the words of Jesus. So is this what this verse is implying? It's actually not really easy la, to determine how we should really apply this verse, especially as we consider how Jesus himself did show an example of not retaliating against those who hurt him, mocked him, and beat him. But I, I do think that we shouldn't take this commandment literally. La. So don't go out there and let people beat you up. La. I don't think Jesus here is promoting pacifism and saying that we cannot defend ourselves. Rather, I think Jesus is talking about our heart and the way we should treat others. So it means that even when others are in the wrong, we are called not to retaliate in the same manner, but to respond by blessing them. So Jesus' commandment does not mean that we should ignore the wrong of others. Yeah, if what they did is wrong, then it's wrong. Lah. We shouldn't ignore that. But rather, it reminds us not to take personal vengeance against them. Or in, in simple terms, we are not supposed to give them a taste of their own medicine. We can correct the wrong of others. Yeah, that commandment did not speak against this. We can correct the wrong of others. We can rebuke them. We can take civil action if they are, what they are doing is against the law. But we cannot respond evil with evil. We cannot act out of revenge. And I think that is what Jesus is implying. Because if we respond evil with evil, this means that we too have fallen into sin. If we retaliate in the way that they treat us, then how are we different from them? So in a sense, Jesus is not asking us to be bullied but rather he's reminding us not to be the same bully as the person doing the same to us, even if it means that we lose that fight, even if it means that we may have to make some sacrifices, we don't react the same way as they react. And this is why in Romans 12 verses 19 to 21, Paul says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves. But leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with with good. Again, take note, none of these verses are actually saying that we should ignore the wrong of others. None of these verses are saying that we should accept the wrong that they are doing. So in a sense, we can still have the right to correct them, to rebuke them. But what these verses are reminding us is how the attitude, the type of attitude that we are responding towards them. That it should not be out of revenge or hatred but out of love and to bless. So we are called to a higher standard of blessing others. And it is because that we are no longer bounded by sin, then we should not act or respond in a way a sinner would. You know, we are no longer following that natural response, but a supernatural response, one that is like Christ. Difficult people are everywhere. La. This is a, a fact. La. We cannot avoid. La. They have been around all the time. So 
we would face them every day and everywhere in our lives. So no matter where we go, there will be people who are against us and will hurt us. Even if we don't have personal enemies, some people may be very good, no personal enemies. But we will still have enemies of our faith. People who are against what we believe. Jesus himself already says that the world will hate us because it hates him. But what is worse is sometimes that even the church is no exception. Sometimes even in the church, we have enemies. There are Christians who refuse to serve together. There are Christians who would try to avoid a certain member at all costs. Sometimes even can plan their schedule, plan what time they reach church that they don't see that person because they know what time that person comes. There are Christians who attack fellow believers in church. So we have enemies all around and all the time. But most of the time, we cannot control the way others treat us or the way they act. If they want to be a difficult person, then that's their choice. We cannot control it. But again, what we can control is our response, how we treat them. So therefore, Jesus says in Luke 6, verse 35, the the last verse of this passage, he says, but love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be the sons of the Most High. For He is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. So with this in mind, I think there are some things that we can reflect on and try to do in our lives from today's sermon. So these are some of the things that we can look. The first one is we can ask God to give us a humble and loving heart. Sometimes we are unable to love and bless our enemies is because of our own pride. We sometimes feel that we are better than them. Oh, that person terrible. I'm better. So they don't deserve any blessings from us. So I think it's good that we pray that God will teach us to be humble to the point where we are willing to consider the needs of our enemies as we remember how God loved and blessed us when we were his enemies. So I think this is important. Uh, ask God to give us a humble and loving heart. The second one is to pray for the transformation of our enemies. Yeah, in a sense, as I mentioned, just how we cannot control how they act or respond. Uh. We can, there's, there's very little thing that we can do. Uh. But the very least, we can pray. Our enemies may be mean toward us, But this means that they need Jesus and the Word of God all the more. So although personally I'm not against the idea of praying for God to give consequences for their wrongdoing so that they repent, but uh, that is not what Jesus meant, I believe, when He said pray for our enemies. Because when Jesus said pray for our enemies, it is also in the context of blessing and loving them. So we pray that the gospel will work in their lives and lead them closer to Christ, resulting in transformation. Who knows, one day the most hateful person in your life may be the most godly person you know. So I think sometimes we have to pray them in this manner. The third one that we can reflect on is, you may be the enemy in the lives of others. Yeah, sometimes we always think about, oh, who is my enemy? Who treat me bad? And we forgot to look at ourselves. Uh. Yeah, maybe we are the enemy of the lives of many other people. So pray that we learn to be careful in our conduct. Uh, that we don't make other people uh, in their work of blessing others difficult. Uh. And later if someone tell, tell us, oh, it's very difficult to bless you, uh, then we should realize, oh, perhaps I'm the enemy now. 
So always seek forgiveness when, whenever we offend someone else. Yeah, so, sometimes I know in the Asian culture, it's very hard to say sorry, but I think this is something that we have to learn in a sense to the point that it becomes a habit. If we do something wrong, we say something wrong, apologize, ask for forgiveness, strive for reconciliation. I think this is something that we also often neglect. Yeah, sometimes if there's some conflict arise, we just tend to sweep it under the carpet. Lah. So if nobody talk about it, then no problem, right? Well, no, because everyone keeps it in their heart. So if there's no reconciliation, the hatred is there and it's difficult for us to bless one another already. So if possible, always seek for reconciliation. Try to resolve the issue. We do not want to cause others to stumble in their faith because of hatred as well. Yeah, so we don't want to be that source of stum uh, become that stumbling block. So let us watch out in this area. Lah. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good practice like once a year to just message the people around us, say, oh, if I've done something to you, uh, you can let me know and I ask you for forgiveness, something like that. Lah. Yeah, sometimes we may do it unconsciously, lah, hurting others. The fourth one is find ways to bless our enemies. And it does not need to be great deeds or heart-touching action, but it can be simple things, like just try to say thank you la, to your enemy. Yeah, so some, some words itself are a blessing. Now say thank you, say hello, asking how are you. Oh, it can also be giving them a meal, giving them a drink or something that they need. First, different people would have different situation, different context, but we need to be intentional in finding ways to bless our enemies. You know, we don't wait. If we wait, it will never happen like, because enemy, ma, we would naturally tend to avoid them. So it has to be intentional. Yeah, sometimes even by saying hello, uh, it may even shock that person. Like, oh, I, I thought you hate me. How can you greet me? Uh, and it can bring change. So find ways. And the last one, it's also hard for many people. Uh, tell them about their wrong. Sometimes our enemies may not even know that they are an enemy for us because they didn't realize that what they are doing is wrong. They didn't realize that they have said something or done something that hurt us. So sometimes it's good for us to communicate. We need to tell them. And this may prevent them from further mistakes as well. Of course, this does not guarantee that they will listen. Lah. Some, some may be not aware, but some we tell and then we rest while they are aware. They purposely act in that way. Then there's nothing we can do. But at least for our part, I think it's good for us to at least tell okay, what you have said, what you have done, I think it hurt me and I'm not happy about it. So we need to clarify it with them. And perhaps if it is, un is, if it is unintentional, then there's room for reconciliation directly. Yeah, so I think this is something that we have to learn as well. La. Even in the church, sometimes, sometimes in the church, it's very hard for us to do this. Because we say, oh, we need to love one another. Ma. Someone do wrong or something, okay, la, tahan, la, uh, it's okay. La. But after a while, it accumulates, then one, we, we would suddenly just treat that person very weirdly. Yeah, it becomes very, very awkward. We avoid that person. We don't want to serve with that person. Then we still say, hey, it's okay, la, I forgive. La. Sometimes we need to say, we need to tell. And that person sometimes also need to know. If not, they are wondering, why is everyone avoiding me? Eh? What am I doing that, pe that causes others to hate me? Yeah, sometimes people are just ignorant. La. So let us tell them about their wrong. Yeah, so five things for reflection and respond for the message today. La. I think this is what we can try to practice in our lives. So as Paul reflects the teaching of Jesus in Romans chapter 12, verse 14, he says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Although it is a difficult blessing to give, yet it is a unique blessing 
that we as believers can give. And because this is also the blessing that our God has given to us. So may we radiate this kind of blessing in our life in this new year so that whether friends or enemy, loved ones or stranger, all will be blessed through our lives and through our love. Because having a blessed new year does not only mean that we receive much blessing, but it can also mean that because we are giving much blessing. And let us also do that part, not only asking for to receive, but asking God to help us to give more and more. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for this morning. As we gather here as a church, we learn from your word. And today we learn from the passage on loving and blessing our enemies. But Lord, as we come before you, we admit that this is very difficult for us to do. This is a very difficult blessing to give. Lord, there are some people who in our lives who have hurt us so much, who have done great damage to us, And Lord, we have difficulty in loving them. But yet your word once again reminds us what we need to do. And we are also reminded that what you have done for us. Because while we were sinning against you, living in our wickedness, doing all kinds of wrongs in our thoughts and in our deeds, you love us, you bless us, You still give us the greatest gift through your son. You save us. So we ask that you help us to do the same to these people in our lives. That while they are hurting us, while they are abusing us, and even when we feel hurt, sad, angry, Lord, we want to learn to bless them. And we know that we cannot do this by our own ability, by our own strength. So we ask you to strengthen us. Help us to live this higher standard of blessing, that we bless them unconditionally, without expecting anything in return. And we pray that through blessing them, it can help them realize or experience what love is that we may share your love and blessing to them. So Lord, help us. And at the same time, Lord, we also want to pray for them. For the different members in the congregation this morning, we know that there are enemies in our lives. And Lord, we want to commit our enemies into your hands. We ask that your word will touch their heart, that your spirit will work in them, that brings transformation that they too will be able to change. And they too, instead of cursing others, will start blessing others. And we pray for the church too, Lord, that whatever conflict, hatred that we have among us can be resolved too. So that the church will not be a place of fighting, but a place of blessing. And we continue to commit our lives to you that we too won't be a hateful person in the lives of others. Always help us to live out the fruit of the Spirit so that we will always be a blessing for others. So in this new year, Lord, we give you thanks for all the blessing that you have given to us and we know that you will continue to bless us and therefore we respond by also blessing others including our enemies. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.